Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Auditor Firmacraft. So the plan for today is to automate a couple smaller things around the house. Like for example, I want to look into making an automated blast furnace. I want to also make automatic sheets now. And maybe we can look into making an automatic quern. That would be a lot of fun. All right, let's actually start with something else, the roof. So I spent quite some time actually making a lot of copper sheets again. This is still, despite the machinery, a bit of a manual process because I always have to throw the ingots and the flux into the basin, wait to make double ingots, take it and yeah, put it on here and hammer it into sheets. Took a while, so that's definitely something I want to automate a bit more. So I wouldn't need to spend time on this. Yeah, let's take a look at this amount of copper blocks. I'm pretty sure this could be enough to finish the roof because I can still turn this into slabs. So we should have something like 500 slabs again. Let's see how far this gets us. It's actually around 700 copper slabs, so fairly confident that should be enough. Most of the roof has already turned almost completely green. It's about time that we continue here. Looks like I actually have enough copper to finish this, but now I completely ran off andesite bricks. So what should we do? Either make a quick mining machine, but I also looked at the andesite cobble recipe. It looks like it's actually loam dirt and silt dirt. I'm pretty sure that's actually the type of dirt I have a lot of. So could maybe quickly make a couple andesite cobble blocks so we get some bricks again. Oh right, it was the silty loam dirt we have a lot around here. Got silt dirt and we would need to silt dirt again. Okay, I guess I'm just gonna finish the copper part of the roof and then either this episode or next episode we're gonna go out and make a small mining machine to get more andesite again. And last two blocks, there we go. Just missing the stone here now. So that definitely looks more cozy now. I like it. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what to do with the first floor yet. Maybe we can, here in this longer hall, have some smaller machines again. Not entirely sure what it would be useful for. Um, here on the left, I was actually thinking I could have some personal space. Maybe on the left, we, maybe we have a dividing wall here again. There's just some great mod machinery then on the right. And on the left, I could have maybe my bed, armor stand with my armor, tool rack, um, maybe a trophy room. Uh, yeah put all my diamonds, all those things I collect, my journeys that are kind of unnecessary, maybe even my bathroom. So we could use the hot spring water for a jacuzzi. So that's a couple ideas I have there. Although that's usually not my play style, I usually never do any of those decorative things, or very rarely. <laughs> usually I just build farms and so on in vanilla Minecraft, but Terraforma Craft feels different. I kind of kind of want to do it. <laughs> Next, I want to look into the possibility to automate the blast furnace a little bit. So we already have the whole setup here. We can turn it into steel and so on. It's mostly about actually dropping in more iron flux and fuel from the top. Um, so right now we can put in 20 iron and flux at a time, but if I need more than a thousand steel for train tracks, then it's still a lot of manual effort. What I can basically do is now with the max size blast furnace, I can actually just start it up and then drop like another hundred iron on top it would actually use it up before it despawns. But still, uh, some sort of dropper setup that does it automatically with a, with a clock would be even more convenient. All right, I'm a bit limited on space here. I think I'm just gonna try this out in Creative real quick, because I'm not sure if we can maybe use a comparator to read out some uh, info from the blast furnace or if it's strictly just every minute or whatever, we drop in more iron. Um, yeah, we'll find out about it. So it looks like neither the comparator nor the stockpile switch can get any info from the blast furnace directly. Probably also not if you turn it on, no. Okay, so that's the first thing. I guess the next thing is stopwatch time. I wanna find out how long one unit of fuel lasts and how long it takes to process 20 of the iron. Oh, those numbers are kinda odd. So one unit of bituminous coal lasts exactly 27 seconds and it takes 44 seconds to process 20 iron and flux. Actually those numbers aren't even that weird. So if you round up 44 to 45 and then put in 12 units of iron and flux every 27 seconds and one unit of bituminous coal, it should work out in the end. And it really did. So instead of using a belt, I decided to just use the chutes instead. Because this way I don't need to run any uh, rotational force shafts up there. I can just you know, have it all connect to one chute and it drops it down there. I also place some slabs or glass trapdoors here on the side. Because sometimes the items are still glitching to the side. 
and this hopefully keeps them in there. Yeah, sometimes here this molten block drops a little bit lower, and then sometimes items drop down a little bit. Item elevator effect, and they were glitching to the side, but yeah, this should get rid of that problem. Okay, so 27 seconds, uh, something I had in the beginning here, but of course we have this extra delay, we have to unpower the torch for a moment. Technically, four ticks would have been enough, but in the end, then it was a bit over 27 seconds, and the amount of coal uh, we have in the yeah, blast furnace was dropping lower and lower, so I set it to 26 and set this to 8, so we're roughly at 26 and a half seconds. If you yeah, waste a little bit of coal every hour, maybe one piece now, doesn't matter, right? So I've been running for quite a while, 92 buckets of pig iron in there. Yes, that's almost a thousand ingots, so seems to be quite stable. I also added content observers to the, no sorry, stockpile switches. Content observers something else that yeah, keep track of the, the chests here. It's just simpler than using comparators and signal strength. So like here can actually just adjust if we drop lower than 4% fill level on any of those chests here. It's probably mostly gonna be the, the iron, the crushed iron chest to be honest. Then we also push down here this block with a good old vanilla piston. Didn't find a better way to disable the clock. It works. <laughs> All right, and one thing that I haven't done yet would be to fully automate this. So right now, I would just drop um, 20 of each in there, then heat it up, wait a little bit, and then start the clock. Um, because the, the sequence in the beginning would be a bit different. It takes a while for everything to heat up, and you need to uh, spend more coal until you get there, until you run it at continuous mode. And I could, of course, automate it fully. You could also use a deployer to automatically turn on the blast furnace with linton steel in his hand. But uh, I'm running out of space there in, in yeah, the room we have. So I'm gonna keep it simple. If you at some point make a dedicated factory, for example, to make train tracks or something like that, then we can also fully automate it and, and do all of that. But since I'm low on space, um, I'm not gonna keep it at that. But that's already such a huge help. I mean, we can just put in a ton of iron into this chest now and does this thing come back an hour later and have just a ton of uh, train tracks or whatever. So it's good enough for now. Back in survival, the blast furnace setup has been built and I also updated a couple of the switches, mostly thanks to the redstone link. Makes it a lot more convenient. For example, instead of having the lever here in the back to turn on the pump, it's now in the front. It's super convenient. Then here we got switches now yeah, to switch to steel production or train track production. Then also, finally, <laughs> I don't need to reach up anymore to turn on the height scraper. It's now attached to the lock. So below is just the redstone link that then sends the signal up there. It's actually really convenient. I love it in modded, but I don't think I would like it in vanilla. Here, this is also now a bit cleaner below. So yeah, just really nice. And here in the back, I also added a note block. So we can turn on the clock for the blast furnace just by clicking it. So I guess the way this would be handled right now is I would just need to bring up some coal as well. Uh, I think I would just fill this up entirely, then run back down again and light it just with my flint and steel and wait a little bit, click the, the note block and then we turn on this clock here. All right, still gotta fill this up. Brought some flux already up there. We're kind of low in flux as well. It's pretty bad. Two minus coal, also not much left. We have a lot of charcoal, but the problem is the um, that coal powder which we need, which we can get from black sand. Don't have the right stone type around here to, to actually make it. So there's a couple things I actually need to get. So we need a stone type for flux, then a stone type uh, to make more bituminous coal. And of course, I need some end set as a building block. So maybe the next thing we should do, actually do is make a little mining machine and get a couple blocks again. And this would here be for the iron. Let's actually make a batch. Okay, let's see. So I got a huge amount of iron now. Just gonna take out 20 of each. There we go, also some coal. And then slowly drop it in there, not all at once. So it has some time to trickle through. I wonder if this worked. <laughs> oh, but it was too much at once. Let's quickly check. 
Yeah, I did. Okay. Then I can just light it. Then I'd wait. A short moment until we're, I don't know, around yellow. Then I click a note block and then it should start producing automatically. I'm also gonna make more pig iron. Because we needed to make black steel and I wanna make a huge batch of blue steel. Okay, it's about time. I was gonna turn this system on. Then I click the note block. And now after 27 seconds it should put in the next batch. Let's see. Yep, 26 seconds. And then it should drop 12 flux, 12 iron and 1 coal. There we go. Probably dropped it down, I'm <laughs> quite sure it did. Seems to work, both iron and fuel is getting restocked. Alright, it worked great. I just ran out of fluxy on top and the clock was automatically turned off so we won't waste any coal or iron. Got a decent amount of pig iron and I've been thinking, the wireless redstone is actually so powerful. Why do I even have any wiring directly on site? I mean, all I need in the end would be a redstone link attached to the block here, controlling the torch. That's basically it. Everything else, the clock can be somewhere else. Even the stockpile switches can send their status to somewhere else. I don't need any wiring anymore directly on site. I can have some sort of a server room where we have all the controls. Maybe I can even do the proper controls now. Um, where I have a start sequence for the blast turners and then it goes to the continuous mode. All, yeah, all the redstone could be in one room that is somewhere else. Then I have enough space to do all the most complicated things. That's definitely the way to go. Um, I'm gonna leave it like this for now. But one of the upcoming episodes definitely gonna look into this. Let's continue with a quick mining operation. So we're gonna need some andesite and then something like marble or whatever that can be turned into flux. I also looked it up. Andesite can actually be turned into coke powder, so two in one. Perfect. Don't need a third stone type for that. Alright, then this time I actually want to build the mining machine at the base and then just use the card assembler to bring it with me. So I'm gonna use like a hundred drills just to dig straight down get a bit of that stuff, pull it back up with the rope pulley and then pick it up with the wrench, bring it back to base somewhere. That would be the plan. Right, then let's head outside. There's one more thing I actually want to show you guys. There's also framed glass doors and the best thing is this. All of them open. This is such a nice animation as well. Look at this. I could do this all day, <laughs> but let's continue with the mining thing. So I hope this is gonna work how I imagine it to be. So we got a hundred drills, some chests on top. Then here we got the rope pulley, gear shift and clutch to control it all, rotation speed controller. And here is the windmill bearing. We need 16 sails to run this at full speed. And it's all on top of a card assembler. Right, so let's see. Can I just do this and pick it up? Yeah. Okay, then we will just bring this along and place it down where we need it. I guess this could be a good spot here. So there's some exposed andesite gravel here on top or a little hole. I guess here we can dig down a bit. Okay, so we just place this. Okay, then I guess I'm gonna break the minecart in case something unexpected would happen. And then here we got the whole machine. Right, then I guess I'm just gonna activate the clutch here real quick. Set this to 256. Turn this on. Got a ladder to get up there. <laughs> Whatever block. Okay. And I guess as soon as I flick this lever, I start digging down. It's that easy. So just a couple of minutes later and the machine is already pretty low. I think I'm just gonna get it back up. So here's the gear shift to bring it back up. Just curious if I already hit the second stone type and what it is. There's some slate below. Ah, uh, what can we get out of slate again? Slate cobble. Wait, I can just press U. Or can I? Not if the search bar open. Spin inventory, slate. So we can 
turn this into slate gravel, which can be turned into brown sand, and this gives us sulfur. Yeah, not too interesting. Okay, so let's move on. Marble is actually just a couple blocks over. Because this area was specifically selected for that. There... Yeah, we have access to marble right away. Alright, then we just need to place it down. And the minecart. Oh, it's already 256, it also saves that. And we can turn it back on. <laughs> that easy. I'm already on my way back. Just ran into a slate biome here and I saw why not search for some kaolinite again. Could I actually imagine that the next time we go out exploring, we just bring this mining machine with us. Okay, so find some kaolinite. If you have a 25 by 25 mining machine, it's easy to dig it out. All right, yeah, I found nothing. Oh, that's from somewhere. Oh, hello there. Medium sample of kaolinite. All right, I think I'm gonna place it down again. I believe the center point should be right around here approximately. Yeah, too bad that we only have a 10 by 10, like a 25 by 25 now. Of course, would have been even better, but that's 625 drills. Um, we could probably make it with all the iron we can produce now. Anyway, let's place it down again, but I noticed that all of the chests are already filled up. Could make more space by maybe crafting the andesite and the marble already into cobble. Although the marble just needs to be hammered into flux. Oh, i just add a couple more chests. I mean, there's trees around. I got glue with me. It's probably the best. So I quickly doubled the amount of chests here. Hopefully we can get the kaolinite. Probably actually worth keeping an eye on this. You could actually check with the prospect to pick. Very large sample of silverite. Okay, that's not what I was looking for. Still says medium sample. Okay, Leonard. There it is. <laughs> ah, we get it. We got it partially, if you like. Okay. Just gonna keep down a little bit more and then we just move it a couple blocks over. Basically, just gotta move it 10 blocks ahead. Yeah, let's pull it back up and do that. This is actually much easier than the gantry shaft contraption we had in the beginning. I wonder what else could we add? Maybe we could add mechanical crafters <laughs> that immediately turn the little loose rocks into cobble or something like that. Anyway, um, yeah. place it again. Just turn it back on. Let's get the rest of that kaolin in. Okay, let's see. Still says traces. Ah, oh, there it is, okay. That should be it now. It's the rest of the kaolinite. Yep, found nothing. That's it. Quick check, how much did we get? So there's 15, 16, 31, 31 more kaolinite. Okay, not quite a second blast furnace. We would need something like 60, 64 more. But at least something. So time to ride back home again. I think there's still some slate stone around here. So worth checking, but it's not like we need more kaolin desperately. But I guess the next time we go out exploring, we're definitely gonna bring yeah, a version of this. Probably even more drills in case we find something like, oh, there's traces of diamond. <laughs> Let's get the mining machine out or things like that. Almost makes me regret that I didn't use this machine earlier already. I mean, like it's set up right now, it uses a ton of drills already that we didn't have in the beginning. But yeah, you learn so much while playing this. It's not like in vanilla where I have 10,000 hours and we would start a new world. It's almost boring because I've done it 10 times. So this modded series is definitely out of my comfort zone. I'm also still learning and can't really expect to make the perfect contraption right away. Okay, I just need to place down a machine somewhere to have access to the stone. Here we got a bit of open space. 
I was actually also thinking that we could maybe build something above this machinery here as well. I want to add a couple more things to this. So we can make lye for the, for the upgraded glass out of wood ash. So make a switch here so we can actually produce that stuff as well. And then I also want an automatic system to make lignite and bituminous coal from this as well. And I think I'm just going to redo the whole thing. So here we had the big crafters. That's why there's a lot of wide open space. I'm pretty sure uh, two conveyor belts is also enough here. There's a lot of cogwheels. I'm really thinking about redoing this entirely. Okay, but for now, so we're facing east. No, wait. It actually doesn't matter. I'm facing differently even. So I'm pretty sure I can place it down here without replacing a lot of blocks. Let's just do it. <laughs> bit risky, but hopefully it works. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Placed in the right direction. Got access to the chest. Perfect. One hour later now, all of the chests have been emptied. Bit of a shame that I don't have a use for the dirt right now. I used to just put it into the dirt to clay converter. But since we have a dedicated clay form now, it would be a bit silly. So I guess I'm just gonna store it here for now. I guess at some point we probably have to throw it out because we get too much. Anyway, then I also took all of the gravel, like andesite gravel and the other gravel types we got. Put it into the crusher. Got a good amount of coke powder again. So actually not that much, but at least um, we have more bituminous coal for a while. And also made some saltpeter. Which we can, by the way, also turn into salt if we crush it again. Um, so in case we need more halite for uh, making rose quartz, we need for some redstone components. We can basically also get it just from the cobble generator now. If we take the white sand we get here, turn it to salt, Peter, and then to salt. And then with the crystallization thingy into halite. Okay, so we also got that covered. Then I took all of the, the cobble, put it into toolboxes, and stored it in here. Unfortunately, we don't have a toolbox preview. That would be awesome, like some mods of a Shiker box preview. So you can see, yeah, with a little extra GUI, what's inside of a Shiker box or toolbox inside of a chest. That would be awesome. But I guess the toolbox wasn't really made for this. I guess the create mod authors are thinking we have Shiker boxes for that already. Why does the toolbox need that feature? But would would have been awesome. So what I did instead is I took, took the you know, toolboxes, brought them to the scribing table, and renamed them, which is of course less convenient than having the preview. Too bad. Then I took also the rest of the endesite cobble and converted some of it to bricks already, but then I ran out of mortar. Need to get more of that stuff, and then we can uh, convert the rest of the endesite cobble into bricks. Um, yeah, the remaining parts of the house have been filled with endesite bricks already. So it's basically finished, except this little extra room here on the side of the blast furnace. So I'm not entirely sure if I want to put another floor above that. Um, guess we just have to finish yeah, the whole metal working area first before we make a decision on that. But the rest of the house looks pretty good now and has a proper roof on top. I've also been thinking about the blast furnace automation again, and I wasn't really satisfied with the current solution, so I went to creative and figured out the blast furnace for real. So the first thing I wanted to find out about the blast furnace were the precise timings. How long does a fuel unit last, and how long does it take to convert uh, the crushed iron and flux you put in there into pig iron? So in order to find out the yeah, fuel time, I used the stopwatch before, which of course gave me pretty good results, but I wanted to know it 100% precisely. So I used the data get command and looked through the values here. And I found an interesting one, burn ticks. This decreases. So this basically indicates how much longer the fuel unit we used will burn for. Then I used this command block here to uh, display this number as a scoreboard. Then I used another command block the scoreboard operation to give me uh, the max value, which is 2,200 of those yeah, internal ticks. Um, that number actually sounded really familiar, 2,200. If you look at the bituminous coal, it says burns for 2 minutes and 12 seconds, which is basically 2.2 minutes. So 2,200, 2.2 minutes. Yeah, definitely makes sense. I used this uh, with the charcoal as well, where it usually says 1.48. 
and this burns of course for 1800 of those internal ticks which are by the way not uh, game ticks so in game ticks is actually 550 that's 27.5 seconds to stopwatch i got 27 seconds so pretty close but now i know it exactly so every 550 ticks we need to put in one bituminous coal and the next thing i want to find out was precisely how long it takes to convert the crushed iron into molten pig iron in the continuous mode so if you have the maximum temperature already in the furnace so this was a bit tricky to find out when I used the data get command. I got some info on the crushed iron that was put in there and the exact temperature, but I couldn't really derive from that how long it takes to convert it. So what I did in the end is I just ran yeah, a blast furnace in continuous mode and I actually detected with this content observer, that's another great more tool, uh, when molten pig iron started to flow through this. We pump out the molten pig iron of the pump into this creative fluid tank. And this basically turns on as soon as there's molten pig iron in there. And this then uh, started a command block contraption, the counting amount of ticks between yeah, basically two batches of molten pig iron uh, flowing. And I got 880 ticks. So to stopwatch, I got 44 seconds, but it basically just confirmed it. 880 ticks, 44 seconds is how long it takes precisely to convert it. One more thing of minor interest was to know how long it takes roughly for the first batch of crushed iron to be processed into molten pig iron. Because there we start from a cold blast furnace, it takes some time to heat it up. And I used the stopwatch for this again, it was 76 seconds. But in the end it wasn't important to know the yeah, super precise number. could have found this out probably um, just by yeah, counting the ticks takes from triggering the dispenser of the fire charges in the back, turn it on until we get molten pig iron here. Probably would have been possible, but in the end I didn't need to know it exactly. It was just um, important to roughly know how long it takes. But what we do in the end is we actually just start a 44 second clock, drop stuff in, and after 44 seconds we drop in stuff again, and then we just have the normal items in there for 30 seconds yeah, until the next cycle starts. So it's not getting lost really. Okay, um, so otherwise we would have needed to make a more complicated control circuit to account for this first batch. But in the end yeah, it worked out. Right, um, yeah, the control circuit will also be in the basement then in survival later. So not directly here next to yeah, the controls for the smart shoot and the stockpile switches to basically turn off the clock if you run low and stuff. So we got a lot, a lot of redstone links around here uh, that would yeah, control that. So I just noticed I probably should actually put this one here so it's not getting activated by the stockpile switch. Okay, so to receive mode, it's probably better. Okay, anyway, so to start it up in survival, probably just use a node block like this. Then we put in Iron and flux, coal, and start it up. Okay, so we put in eight coal precisely. Why eight coal and not just one that we put in every 27 seconds, 27.5 seconds, that would work as well. But I thought in the end it would actually be nicer to just have a single clock running. So uh, yeah, I just took those numbers, 27.5 and 44. And yeah, 44 is one times six uh, times 27.5. So what do we do now? Every fifth activation where we drop in iron and flux, we drop in eight units of coal. So we got you know, the 44 second clock here. So we got those pulse repeaters on 43 seconds plus 16 ticks. And those pulse extenders have two ticks of delay, like yeah, normal comparators or repeaters. Yeah, and then we got a counter, vanilla counter, to count to five, to also put in fuel. Um, I was actually kind of hoping that there would be some sort of a counter block similar to those in create mode as well, because in, yeah, I think when I played modded a couple years ago, uh, there was a mod that had all kinds of things, including that, but it's apparently not in create mode. So just use vanilla redstone instead, you got this nice counter to five. I'm sure if you're aware how this works, here's a version that counts to three just using um, two pistons instead of four so it's just dependent on the update order first you pull the block over here then over here and then to the middle 
the cycles every yeah, three times. If you use four pistons like this, then it cycles every fifth time. Okay. And it was just important that, of course, with the first activation, the observer is always in the yeah, same position. So that's why if we actually activate those stockpile switches, the whole thing is powered. We can also simulate that over here. Basically this happens, and then if you put in stuff into the chest again, this turns off, and then the block is pulled back uh, to basically a default position, which is always the same. And then the next activation, or the first activation, basically, if you turn on the system the next time, we just need like a yeah, observer here, and that triggers the fuel input, basically. Okay, so that's the, the whole system. You can build this in survival now. Back in survival, I've been actually playing for a couple hours. Uh, so I added the system here yeah, in survival for the blast turners. We can check that out, but also did some small additions here and there. Crafted stuff, made uh, blue and red steel again, at least a little bit, which actually still takes uh, quite a lot of time. So the limiting factor right now is the crucible, really. I'm not entirely sure how we can get around this nicely. Um, so the problem is basically I need to put in, yeah, for 40 buckets worth of metals to make the alloys, for example, for the blue steel. Then wait for it, turn the system here off, wait for all to smelt and turn it back on. Then take the weak steel ingots out, combine it uh, with pig iron and so on. It still takes some time. So at some point, definitely gonna make some sort of a blue steel factory, but that is actually quite complex. If you think about all the things that need to go into this, have it fully automatic, there's actually so much stuff. Not entirely sure if we're gonna do it here at this space or if we're gonna make a dedicated factory maybe for it. Right, um, yeah, so I wanted to show off the blast furnace system. I actually have to turn this off. This requires so many stress units, I'm making clay right now, that we, have, we always have to turn off stuff now. It's getting a bit annoying. I was thinking we could maybe add more windmills somewhere else, or we actually looked into the steam engine maybe. I've only seen methods using it, in combination with a kelp farm, um, but it looked really promising. Anyway, uh, let's check it out. So here I actually put the redstone. So I thought about actually using uh, a dedicated room for all the redstone, like have some sort of a server room, but then I figured, I mean, this hallway here in the basement, it's probably not gonna get used for something decorative or nice. I mean, it's just for <laughs> pretty much the shaft wiring and hooking up all kinds of things above. I thought, why not put it here? There's even maybe space for, for more yeah, stuff that needs to be wired externally. As you can see, all kinds of redstone links controlling the blast furnace now. Oh, I gotta drink again. Then, yeah, at the top we got the same system as in creative. I guess I'm just gonna drink something real quick. Still got water here. And then I can just flip the switch. There we go, this should turn on the blast furnace. I put like nine stacks of crushed iron in there. Okay, let's turn this on, okay. And we set it to making train tracks. Okay, there we go. Hopefully it works. Okay, 28 of that, and it starts burning. All right, that looks really good. And now it takes those 76 seconds until we converted this yeah, into the first. Molten pig iron, I turn it immediately into train tracks. I also made a ton more smooth stone slabs, so we won't run out of that anytime soon. And then every 44 seconds, the next 20. So it's also really good now to have the, that's what we really want the big blast furnace for, because it's so much more fuel efficient. I mean, it takes the same amount of fuel, the minimum sized blast furnace compared to the big one. Okay, any moment this is hot enough, and then we can see the transition to the next batch. Almost instant, it's perfect. So now we really can ramp up here the train track production. Also change the system here to just have a bigger storage for the train tracks. And also here a nice um, chest to grab it from basically. So there's also a stockpile switch here in the back. If this is full, then it just powers the funnel here, uh, which pulls it out. Okay, more train tracks incoming. That's pretty nice. Got a good amount already. I think here this chest is filled. I got another one that is filled um, at the basically the main storage. So at the moment we probably have like 2,500 or so. 
I guess if we're now focus on uh, making more train tracks, we could actually continue building. Uh, the main limiting factor right now is why I didn't put more iron in there is we need so many of those uh, ingot molds. I think at the moment we can produce like 600 per hour. All right, guys, had a couple other things planned for today, like that automatic quern, but we can just do that next time. Didn't really anticipate that I'm gonna spend so much time on the blast furnace and doing it that diligently. Also didn't really, yeah, I think I would use the, the mining machine, this one. But yeah, next time I'm gonna do that and I'll also try to make more train tracks. So next episode we can also do some more yeah, train building. All right, that's all for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.